Yo everyone, what's going on? Curryway here, and in this video, I did a Minecraft speedrun on the new world record seed by FE666. This seed is unbelievable, and for anyone that missed it, I highly recommend you watch my reaction to the run, which I'll leave linked in the description below for you to check out. I also want to give a quick shout out to Antoine, who did this idea already and gave me permission to also rerun the seed. His YouTube channel has been popping off recently and does a bunch of other Minecraft speedrun content, so definitely go check him out. Remember to leave a like if you enjoy, and double check to see if you're subscribed. If you're not, hit that button to see more content like this in the future. Thanks so much for watching everyone, let's get into the video. Alright, so how are we going to route arguably the greatest Minecraft random seed of all time? It's going to be quite the challenge, I'm not going to lie, we'll call this world record rerun fe666 someone on twitter pointed out that it could be called the iron devil because 666 and fe means iron so maybe that's what it means i still have honestly no idea so i'm just gonna say fe666 to be like clear i don't know anyway we're gonna put in the world seed and we're gonna try and figure out how to route this obviously this overworld is insane the biggest time save for us is probably gonna be somewhere around the fortress area and figuring out how we can manage that part better get possibly blinding into the stronghold and maybe some other time saves so let's see what we can do it's kind of crazy to just like look at this world actually because you think about it it's just it's such a such just a monster seed just I, I couldn't even imagine like what the thought process would even be loading a world that just looks like this like it's so insane so let's check these blacksmiths i, I honestly don't remember what's in what that's the crazy blacksmith okay we need to go there, which is really good. And then we come here. Oh, that's the only blacksmith. That's right. This chest here is for wood, I believe. Yeah. So wood. And we're going to have to get food somewhere, I'm guessing, because there's no food in here. There's four apples. So we're going to need some food. Maybe we can get food in one of these chests. Like right here. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. So honestly, we probably just skip this chest. We go here and we then just go right to here. And then we're able to get, we're easily able to do this run on nine bread. Then we come here. This is obviously just, oh my god, I, I still can't get over that. So then we just do one, two, three, four, five. Enter, easy clap. This should be like literally a minute tops. Easy, we're in the nether. So now the question is, what's next? So if I turn my FOV up a little bit, well, we'll just put it to Quake Pro for the purpose of this. You can actually see the fortress and the chalice at the same time you can see the fortress on all the way on the left and you can see the chalice all the way on the right which is just so insane i can't i just oh my goodness the seat is so I, i'm really excited to play this like the seat is insane so we'll go this way this is going to be pretty straightforward to, and similar to what fe does because of just you know there's not really much else to do you just run to the chalice you mine the chalice cool great fantastic hopefully i don't have to deal with that many hoglins that'd be great then obviously we're going to go over here and do the dip route and that should be pretty straightforward as well. So we just hop down here. We probably break some. Yeah, we could just enter here actually. Perfect. Place some blocks, cover myself in like so, excuse me, and we'll be good to go. We could just throw gold in there. They'll all fall in. We'll be good to go. Set easy peasy. And yeah, so that'll be that. I The only thing I want to check is, okay, we got obsidian in that chest. We have gold armor. We are just so set. Everything in the seed is handed to you on a platter i'm this for set seed is just gonna give for some absolutely ridiculous times next up would be optimal pearl throws and this is gonna be a bit interesting because of just kind of where the fortress is so i'm actually gonna fly over to the fortress first and see where we need to go because obviously we don't really want to be in this section we could technically maybe five render distance here but I don't think that makes the most sense. I don't I don't think that's really the play. And I know that he goes to a blaze spawner that's over here, I believe. Yes, blaze spawner right there. But is there another one that actually works better? Oh, there's one buried. Okay, so yeah, I think this one would work better. It seems closer. Only issue is if we were to blaze bed, we're definitely dropping lava on ourselves. And we don't want to do that. So we'd have to come up with a workaround for that. Maybe we could actually, we could pearl over here and pearl the top part. And then we could just, um, if we went to creative mode here, grab some nether rack and did something like that. Would that work? Or at this point, it's probably just worth it to go to the other spawner, right? Like we're going to have so many pearls from, from bridge bash and we can literally just see it from right there. So I think probably the play is just to run originally, like how we were going to do come in here. We could activate this spawner first and then I'm assuming we could just 
Well, hmm. Maybe we could mine. Maybe there's like a good part to mine through. I wish we could activate this spawner and basically also get this one. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, so I think the best way to do it after checking out, like, you know, Inspectator here. I was thinking about we could just go there, but I think it makes more sense to just run up to the spawner, be super, super aggressive here, and then literally just dig up. I think the question is, I probably need to get rid of these blocks then to figure out where it actually pour the lava so I can figure out what block is actually safe to go up here, right? So let's check this again. Let's go Inspectator. We'd be in here we would see that there is lava kind of everywhere. So if we choose the block, like this block right here, is this safe? That is safe. So this is the block that we'll choose. We'll dig up here, and then we can just pearl on over to the second spawner and blaze bed here and do everything else we need to do. So back to our original game plan then, optimal pearl throws. We're gonna be over here. This is buried. There's not really anything we can do about this being buried. We're just gonna have to run back to the start point here. Now, I think the game plan is probably to throw one that way. And then I like to also count how many pearls I use so I know what's the minimum I can leave with. So we throw one here, which is good. That's great. And then can we throw one over that? That'd be cool. We cannot throw over, but we can basically throw on it. So that's two pearl throws. And then this is this looks pretty set in stone too. We just throw another one that way. That should be three. Yeah, and then we're up here. Beautiful. And then one more kind of on top of that, I believe. And even if I miss, I could just kind of block clutch here, right? Yeah. So if I miss, that's fine. I just block clutch back up. And then we see the lava, which is really good. That's kind of our telltale sign. But we want to be in here, right? So we want to go in there. So we just throw one more pearl in there. I believe that's four. I think I forgot how to count. I think that's four. Then we do everything that we just talked about. And then we could throw one more pearl over there in that hole. And that would be five. So five pearls to get to our blazes. And then last but certainly not least, we're going to have one more pearl to throw this way, which is going to be somewhere around here for good blind travel. I guess technically it's kind of educated, but it's going to be probably here-ish. This looks, this looks about right, so maybe it's going to be a bit of a different throw, but you get the point. So if I make the portal here, this is where I'm going to have to cut and kind of figure out just about exactly where our nether portal is going to need to go. But if I put it here, this is going to be pretty close to optimal cords, obviously. 78 blocks, that is so absolutely insane. 1080, 1240, so I will do some math in my head to figure out where this is going to be. We actually need to find the portal room as well. So the portal room is all the way down here. The cords for the portal room are like 1100, basically, 1104 and 12 12 so that's what i'm gonna go off of i'm gonna do some math see if i can actually put a portal in this spawn room that'd be great or at least in the stronghold itself so let's see what i can do so after some more testing i tried a couple different portals and unfortunately to my knowledge i do not think that we are going to be able to blind directly into the stronghold i know i know it stinks but you know, I guess there had to be one thing about this seed that isn't perfect. I guess one thing that I could try and do is maybe if I just, like, if I just dug down and had fire res and then I just literally build up in the lava. I actually did this on the 1506 run if you guys saw that. All right, so would this put me, if I, if I dug down and then built up in the lava, would this put me in the stronghold? Let's see. It still wouldn't! Wow, it still wouldn't. It still puts me on the surface. That's crazy. So unfortunately, we are not going to be able to. Yeah, we're not. We're just not gonna be able to. We're just. We're just not. So we're gonna have to go with that first spot that puts us here, and then we probably just find a block that we can dig on. Like, hey, maybe this dirt works. Yeah, this this dirt will work perfectly fine. We just dig straight in, easy peasy. We are gonna have to get six blaze rods though, so this run can very easily die to blaze luck, which is going to be quite annoying, but what can you do, right? So I think my my final goal for this, I think that sub 830 is definitely doable. I think there's a couple things that stop this from being absolutely insane. Namely, one, it being a bridge bash, and bridge bash is pretty substantially the slowest still, just because of the proximity of gold blocks and piglin and all that crazy stuff and then the blaze rods needing to get six blaze rods is definitely going to be an issue and then the fact that we actually do have to dig down for the portal room is going to be a challenge but the overworld in the beginning i think is really going to carry i really do believe that i think 830 is possible and we're just going to try and see what happens so 
that's gonna be my goal. I hope you enjoyed the routing process. Let's get into this actual run. Holy cow. Let's take a look at how we did this. I am super, 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 super happy with the outcome of this speed run. The routing did wonders. I'm super happy with the end result. I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. Obviously, we start with the normal stuff. We got to come over here. We got to grab the blacksmith chest, and we actually decide to grab the apples. This actually came in handy a couple times, mainly because I eat most of the bread that we grab here in the nether because of just how much we're purling around. And having the apples for when we're in the end just to heal up a couple more hearts before the one cycle can be really, really useful. So now I'm just going to craft the crafting table and the diamond tools. If I was playing the seed randomly, if I just got the seed, I would craft a diamond pickaxe every single time. But for a set seed type of run like this, making the diamond tools is just such a time save. It makes perfect sense. And because you already have the iron pick, so you're, you're just good to go. And it's also like it, it was so much fun to just shred through everything. I talk about this after when I when I kill the dragon, but it, using diamond tools in a speed run just feels so nice. Everything is just goes so much faster. Even if the, you know, it doesn't save you that much time, it just feels so much faster. So I get to do like a little bit of fancy movement here. I hit my head. I forgot that there was a tree there, but you get to do some fancy movement on the seed, which was really, really nice. I had a blast. There were a couple times where I did it even cleaner, but I was, I was really happy with the outcome here. We're already at the bridge bash and it is literally 115. That's like, I can't even I can't even begin to process that. Like how insane is that for a time? So this is just absolutely bonkers. I think for a fact that this can be sub seven, I think that there is a world that this can be sub seven. And I think this run right here could have been sub seven if it was not for one very, very, very specific thing that we will get into in a second. I also do some crazy parkour here to avoid the hoglins. That was actually like so sick. And my bridge route here is so clean. I'm really, really happy with how this came out. This route was by Dowski. I'll leave a link to Dowski's channel in the description down below. I mess up that right there, but I this this set seed was actually so good for practicing this route because I wasn't really comfortable with it. But just doing it so many times over and over and over and over again, it really, really helped me. And I feel a lot more confident doing this in my actual world record attempt speedruns. So awesome here. This guy kind of just pushed into the hole. He he wasn't really cooperating. I realize he's just gonna, you know, he's gonna fall in. Come up here at the 220 mark to grab this chest. Just get an insane amount of loot, string, obby, crying obby, literal full gold armor. And I craft two two gold pickaxes, by the way, excuse me, because I actually just shred through one of them specifically to mine just netherrack and all these blocks. It's just a lot faster when I have the gold pick. So now I'm going to stand here. I'm literally just waiting on one pearl trade and I can leave. That's all I need. Literally the only thing. Obviously, I'm going to keep the fire charges. That would be bad if I if I left them there. But still, just waiting on pearls. Really kind of sucks that I didn't get it. I could have been leaving sub three. There we go. I finally get it. I'm out. And we're building out of here at the three minute mark. So just really, really awesome. And then I do something here that I have done, I think, every single time. I, I'm about to fall in the lava here. Yeah, I drink a fire res because I know I'm about to fall in the lava. Every time for some reason. Oh, I made the jump. Every time I miss the jump. I don't know why, every time. But this right here is the reason why this run is in sub-7. Watch this. Yep, I hit a piglin, and I'm like, I want to try and save it. And I got hit off, and I was not expecting to get hit off. So I just chucked a pearl, and was like, hopefully that's good. I'm on one heart, and I had to kind of improvise this pearl route. The other pearl route that we came up with in the routing actually worked so well. I was super, super happy with it, and I tried to save this one run. I was like, if I can hit this pearl, it's worth continuing. And I hit the pearl. So we're up here. We literally lived on half a heart. And now I'm just trying to pearl back to getting us like where we needed to go. My trades were super fast. This was a lot faster than some of the other trades that I had. So I really wanted to try and salvage this run in case I got good blazes. And oh boy, did we get good blazes. This blaze split is really cool. So I actually land right on the fortress. And I get one stray here. And then I see two others inside the bad part of the fortress i guess but it's super super worth going for them here and i think i actually end up going yeah three for three on them so that was super super worth it and then three weather skeletons i don't even care about them at all i can activate the spawner which works i get two spawns which is great super happy about that and then i'm leaving here with i believe yeah four i'm four for five at the moment and i found if i break this spot here i can just build right out and get to the other part of the fortress i'm looking for strays here 
And I actually hear more blaze crackle. So I just kind of jump back in here. I don't even end up going to the other spawner. And I just get my six blaze rods. And I'm like freaking out. I'm like, this is the sub seven. This is the sub seven. Oh my god, this is crazy. Especially after I fell too, right? Like it was just absolutely insane. I tried blaze bedding a couple times at the other spawner as well. But there was actually lava that came down when I blaze bedded. So it didn't even end up working out. So I, I it, it was a complete time loss. This was actually by far the best way to do it. Just getting the double spawn on the first spawner and leaving is absolutely insane. I know I have my fire charges and I am leaving the nether at 515. That's so insane. Like, that's just so insane. And it could have been sub 5 if I didn't, you know, screw up the... I can't even say that I screw up, screwed up the pearl throw. It's not my fault that I hit a random zombie piglin, that that was the first time that actually happened on the route, so, unfortunate, but whatever, and we're not even, like, if we spawn in the stronghold, like, there's, there's probably a world where you might even be able to route this for, like, sub five, like, maybe, but I, I highly doubt it, it's just absolutely, like, it's so bonkers, so we're digging down, gold pick again, coming in clutch here with the dig down, and then we just craft all our eyes of ender, I have a bunch of pearls, so I'm totally set, and this is, again, where those apples are coming in handy. I talked about it. I had to eat so much bread on this run. Just with how many pearls I was throwing. And how much damage you take from falling. And regen. And all that fun stuff. So those apples. I never grabbed them when I speedrun normally. They actually came in quite clutch here. So now all I have to do is craft my beds. Easy peasy. We have like 17,000 beds. We're chilling. And something you might notice here is I go to the left instead of the right. In a lot of my speedruns, I actually go to the right. And the reason I go to the left here is because the towers are better on the right side for the dragon to perch. So I'm sitting here. I'm really, really hoping to perch as fast. But it was just a little bit too slow on a god perch. So it, it unfortunately does not get sub 7. But it's definitely possible. And I hope you all enjoyed this video regardless. Enjoy this one cycle. Like I said, this run was an absolute blast. And yeah, here it is. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy. Dude, oh my god, I don't think it's sub 7, but oh my god, this scene is insane! What on earth, bro? 706! Oh my god! Just a little bit faster of a perch for sub 7, but wow, that was way faster than I thought it could be. Oh my god, that seed was insane, that was so much fun! This was like one of the most fun set seeds I had. Getting the diamond tools that fast and just shredding through everything. That was absolutely insane. This was a blast. I hope you enjoyed. Oh my god, that was insanity. Thank you all so much for watching. Obviously, it's the same seed. You know that. Wow. Go check out FE in the description. What an insane run. And I'll see you all later. Peace out.